poor James Yeager. He lost his concealed carry permit. Now, I don't think it's a bit funny the way they took it because all he was doing is stating his First Amendment rights and basically said, if somebody comes in my home trying to take my weapons, I'm going to shoot them. And if I still had some weapons in the house and somebody came in and tried to take my weapons, I would probably shoot them too. <laughs> and I would encourage everybody to shoot anybody coming in their house trying to take their weapons. Now, the funny part is that James laughed at me. When it happened to me, he said, well, you running, you deserved it. You running your mouth. You know, he looked down his nose at me when it happened to me. So now I'm kind of snickering. And, you know, I kind of feel like, uh -huh, uh -huh. this was karma, James. Karma. You know, actually, it's the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You laughed at me, made fun of me, said it was my fault. All right. So, James, you've lost your permit. It's your fault. You shouldn't be doing so many steroids. Don't do steroids and make videos. Now, how does it feel, James? How does it feel to lose your permit? Mm -hmm. Even though you did nothing wrong, you actually committed no crime. Simply stated, you were going to stick up for your Second Amendment. Does anybody have any idea what happens during war? During war, you kill people. I mean, our little chicken poop Tennessee government can't understand it. They think that we're going to kill them. And I have news for the Tennessee government. TBI, I know you're listening to this. I am far more dangerous than James Yeager. James Yeager, he just has a few guns. He knows how to shoot guns. I, on the other hand, since you took my permit, have learned how to make thermite. <laughs> That's right. I have learned how to make a shaped explosive. I don't have one. But I've learned how to make them using copper. And I have learned how to make them so that I can disable any of your armored personnel carriers. And I would encourage everybody to learn that. Because the police have become military. And they have armored personnel carriers. And it's the duty of the citizen soldier to know how to stop one of those armored personnel carriers. I encourage you to learn how to make thermite. They can't take your knowledge away. Pick your guns. Can't take your knowledge. I have even learned, James, this is for you, because it's close to you. There's major fiber optic lines running through Tennessee in certain locations. And if these certain fiber optic lines were taken out, most of Tennessee would lose all its data communications. Whole state of Tennessee would go, <laughs> your, internet, your internet would become dial-up again. You'd be lucky, lucky to get 28K baud by taking out these few fiber optic lines in the key locations running through this state. I also have the knowledge in my head that with just a little bit of cooperation I can take out your all your radio communications for the TBI and state government. <gasps> ah! 
I'm not sharing this information because they have not violated the Constitution yet. If they do violate the Constitution, I will freely share this information. I will tell the militia how to build a guided missile with existing stuff on the shelf today that you can buy commercially. I will explain how to build a guided missile with the range to shoot down a low-flying helicopter. Small off-the-shelf stuff can also make it heat-seeking. Want to make a heat-seeking missile? Up here, very minor electronics available on the shelf. Some of them even at Radio Shack. So, don't worry about James Yeager. Don't worry about the handgun permit. You took my permit. What did you leave me? You left me with my brain. So, there you go, Gooberman. And you, you know what the really frightening part should be to you? There are people that are smarter than me. There are people that know more than me. They know where the high explosives are stored. I don't have any high explosives. I know where they're at, though. And they're not that well guarded. So you know what? You better uphold your oath of office. Because there are people like me that would share this information. Should you not uphold your oath of office. So, as long as you uphold your oath of office, nothing gonna happen. Matter of fact, I would help you. I'll help you. Which leads into my next story. The news media worried about guns. Guess what? We've got, let's see here, five, six schools that are having riots. One school had 30 people arrested. High school, yep. Yeah. Two in Tennessee. The one with 30 arrested wasn't in Tennessee. The 30 arrested was up in Yankee Land, Michigan. Pittsburgh. School riots. Riots. All today. Why was What was the big deal today that made all them children riot? Beat each other up. Yeah, today. While the media is jumping up and down, talking about our automatic rifles, we got children beating the crap out of each other in school. Just goes to show you, they're not very, the government people are not very smart. Why do you think I have to run for governor? We've got a governor now that is actually trying to have a little power grab in the state capitol. Go figure. You know what? The governor's job is to protect the rights of the people. Not submit legislation. I mean, if I was governor and I wanted legislation, I would have to talk to the legislature. They, the, the House of Representatives and say, look, I think this would be a good idea. Would you submit that for me? However, if the, they do submit something for it to be a law and it uh, doesn't protect the rights of the citizen, I would veto it. Or if it tried to put any deficit spending, I would veto it. That's one thing I could do as governor. Veto! Veto, veto, veto. Lots of veto. And that's probably what I would do. <sighs> now do you understand why I don't have any choice but to run? Look what's going on. We've got lawmakers that make laws because of what they see in Hollywood. <sighs> so folks, like I say, Poor James. 
How does it feel to shoes on the other foot? When you're writing your congressman... Oh, by the way, anybody in my district where Mark Pody, he's my representative, I'm having a hard time explaining the Second Amendment to him. He's one of the people that he doesn't own any guns, but he supports the Second Amendment because he is under the impression the Second Amendment is there for our hunting and sportsman's pleasure. Anybody in his district might need to help me tell him the Second Amendment is for defense. And the reason we need assault weapons, well, actually, we don't have assault weapons. We need assault weapons because the bad guys have fully automatic weapons. So, yeah, the good guys need fully automatic weapons because the bad guys have fully automatic weapons, okay? The bad guys have explosives, so the good guys need explosives. That's why we have the Second Amendment. Evil people have weapons. See, we got a pre a, a, a Catholic church in Nashville coming out. Oh, I'm doing it to save the children. Of all people, the Catholic church, they got more pervert priests than, well, I don't know, I wouldn't say any other religion, but their priests make the perverted news quite often. They're doing it to save the children. Well, you know what? Even Jesus is saying that if you got to trade in your cloak for a sword. Christianity's under attack, and a pastor's wanting to disarm his flock. He wants to disarm God's children at a time that their Christianity is under attack. Where is the logic in a preacher doing that? Sometimes, you know, these, these pastors, you can tell when they don't speak to God. They don't speak for Him. If you really listen to them, they're not speaking for God. God would not disarm His children when Satan is attacking when evil is there, God doesn't tell you to to uh, let the devil. He doesn't. You don't turn your cheek to the devil. No, you fight evil. But that's another story. So Tennesseans, I'm going to see y'all on the state capitol hill on. Uh, let me check the date here. Date, 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 date. Uh, the nineteenth. I hope I can make it. I got a pickup truck that guzzles gas, and uh, I haven't been able to get the tags on my car because it won't pass Marta. So anyhow, maybe I'm going to make it to the state capitol on the 19th. Now, there's another group saying February 8th. You know, Tennessee legislature is going to be in, in session uh, here next week. We need to get on our legislatures now. So Tennesseans... Monday, time to call the state legislatures. Suggest restoring the 26th Amendment or the Section 26 of the Declaration of Rights in Tennessee. That's Tennessee's Constitution. Restore it to its original format. The original format of the 26th Declaration of Rights in Tennessee was one sentence. All free men of the state have the right to keep and bear arms. Period. There was no if, ands, and buts, no extra commas, nothing. That's all it said. That's what the original Constitution of Tennessee said. Let's put it back the way it used to be. How about that one to contact me? That'll, that'll help us a little bit. And we could follow Wyoming's lead. They're introduced legislation to tell the feds that you're not enforcing those laws in our state. So you Tennesseans need to get off your dead butts and get hold of your state representatives and your state senators in the state ones. Not the ones in D.C. I'm talking about the ones at the state capitol in Nashville. You need to get on their butts and you need to ride them hard. 
you know, hey, got to tell them we want our we want our rights in Tennessee protected. Restore the Twenty Sixth Amendment, Tennessee's Declaration. Restore the Declaration of Rights in Tennessee, Section Twenty Six. Restore it to its original writing. Restore it. See if we can get that one done in Tennessee with their super majority. There's no reason they can't. No excuses. No excuses, Tennesseans.